Okay, welcome back to the channel and we're glad to have you. One priority that we have on this channel is to inform you about all things real estate so that you can go into any type of transaction with knowledge and with confidence. And one giant aspect of real estate is of course the lending industry. And so I have with me my good friend, Renee Broach, who is the branch manager at Union Home Mortgage on West Evans Street in Florence, South Carolina. She has a decade of experience in the lending industry and she's gonna walk us through something very important today. So this should be the beginning of a playlist that we're planning to build, which will be a comprehensive playlist that will educate you on all things that you need to know about lending and the loan process from A to Z. So whether you already have a mortgage or you're planning to buy a home, hopefully this playlist will be helpful to you. So unless you are paying cash, then you are gonna need a loan. And so what Renee and I are gonna do today is go through what that initial conversation with a lender could look like. And then at the end of this video, we're gonna recap the key points that you need to take away because these data points really are super important and they're gonna define what the entire loan process will look like for you. Okay, so I'm gonna let Renee introduce herself and then we'll get into today's topic. Hey, Sammy. So as you said, my name is Renee Broach. I am a branch manager at Union Home Mortgage here in Florence, South Carolina. We're located on 802 West Devon Street and I've been in the lending business for 10 years. Excellent, so I know that you told me that there's probably a good place to start in having these conversations, so why don't you tell us what we're gonna be talking about today? Absolutely, so today I would like us to kind of do a little role play exercise where you pretend that you're the client and you're coming into my office for the first time for a home buyer consultation. Okay. Are you good with that? Yep. All right, so again, Sammy, my name is Renee Broach, I'm a lender, and what brings you into our office today? Well, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to buy a home. I've got um, a new addition to the family. We need some more space and I'm tired of renting. Well, congratulations. How old's the new one? Uh, two months. Oh, <laughs> how many children do you have total? Four. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tired of renting. I totally understand that. How much are you paying in rent? Uh, more than I wish I was paying. <laughs> <laughs> we think highly of ourselves in our rental market in Florence. So I totally understand that. I've got clients that come to me on a regular basis that are paying over $2,000 a month in rent that, as you said, could easily be put towards a mortgage. So if you've got a few minutes, I wanna go through some of the key questions that we'll be going over. Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so do you know what your credit scores look like? Um, not 100%. Last time I checked Credit Karma, I think I was in the low 600s. Okay, so Credit Karma is a good place to start. Just give, a, one thing that we see as lenders that the consumers are unaware of is Credit Karma is a lot of times optimistic. So if you guys do end up applying for a mortgage, we will pull your true credit scores. They can be a little different than what you see on Credit Karma. So don't be surprised or shocked by that interaction. So credit we're gonna say is around 650. Where do you work? I work in the warehouse at a local med device company. That sounds complicated. All right, so how long have you been there? Four and a half years. Okay, are you W-2 or are you considered like a contract worker? W-2. Okay, great. The reason why I ask is if you're self-employed, it requires a little bit of different underwriting. We have to work through the income a little differently. So it's good that your W-2 would make your life a lot easier in the mortgage process. Now, do you have uh, any down payment say for this purchase? Not much. We've got about $1,700 in the bank. Okay. All right. Any, and I only ask this because you're a Southerner. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> uh, we Southerners tend to keep money in places that are not the bank because we don't trust the bank. So do you have any other cash in, we call it mattress money, but do you have any other money to put towards this purchase? Or are we looking at true down payment assistance options? Uh, we do have a couple thousand dollars at home also. Okay, all right, good to know. So we'll make sure that we address that when we do the mortgage application. So at this point, what we would do, it sounds like your your credit is absolutely in a workable range. Your income is gonna be stable based off of what you tell me so far. Are you working 40 hours a week or 36 or does it, does it fluctuate in your warehouse? 37 hours a week. 37, okay. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got what we would consider stable income credit's workable. We need to look at some down payment assistance options. Um, do you guys have a, a, a certain payment in mind that you're wanting to stay around? Or have you even started looking at that yet? I'm hoping that we can find a home where our monthly mortgage is 
basically the same as what we're paying for what rent. you're paying in rent okay because that's what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with understood all right is there anyone else that's going to go on the application with you yes you spouse or any anyone else or is it just going to be in your name i think it'll just be me because i'm not sure what my wife's credit situation is okay that's fair so we have two options there uh if you want to have her apply with you you can we can always take her off if her credit's not where it needs to be um, and then you can also have that conversation with her. She may or may not want to be on the mortgage. Does she work or is she a stay-at-home mom? I know you mentioned you have four children. She's a stay-at-home. Okay, so if yeah. she's a stay-at-home mom and she's not bringing any income in, what I would probably suggest to do is just add her on the deed. That way she has some legal ownership in the property, but she's not obligated on the mortgage because she has no income to contribute to the transaction. Okay. And then... As far as your next steps, you know, if you, I, I know that you mentioned that she was running to Target earlier today. So I know right now it's just us chatting. I don't know if you want to talk about this with her first or if you want to go ahead and step in my office and we can do the application. So I know that seems like a very simple conversation, but Renee was able to gather very key information just from that simple dialogue. So what we'll do is in our next video, we'll look at what putting in that application would actually look like in South Carolina, what type of options are available to us, and look through a scenario of what it could actually play out like if you were putting in a loan application. So Renee, would you just in a couple of quick bullet points, let us know what were those key points of information that you were trying to ascertain in that dialogue? Absolutely. So the first thing you notice, I was asking about your credit because that is one of the key things. And everyone knows, well, I shouldn't say everyone knows. However, most consumers know when they're trying to purchase a house that their credit has to be at a certain level. Oh, I just wanna have a ballpark of where your credit is, of what you think your credit score is. I want to determine if you're a W-2 employee or if you are self-employed, because that is gonna take the direction of the conversation a different way. If you're W-2, chances are your income is stable. But if you're self-employed, say if you're a contractor or a truck driver, your income could vary and fluctuate tremendously. So that conversation is going to look a little bit differently. The documents we require are going to be a little bit different. The next thing I was looking at were your assets. That lets me know if I need to help give you a down payment assistant option or if you already have the money to put down towards the purchase of this house. So all of these things we're going to validate and verify based off of the documentation that's required, but this just lets us have a beginning conversation. So at this point, I would typically take the client into my office. We would actually sit down and find out what that hourly rate of pay looks like. I would start to request documents from them so we can actually truly see what their buying power is. Okay, so in our next video, we will continue to look at what this process plays out like and look at some of the different scenarios. So I want to thank you, Renee, for joining us. And again, this is Renee Broach. She's the branch manager at Union Home Mortgage on West Evans Street in Florence, South Carolina. If you want to reach out to them and contact Union, I'm going to put all of their contact information down in the description of this video. So if you found this content helpful, then please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification so that you can stay notified whenever we drop future content, not just this playlist, but all things related to real estate in the state of South Carolina and life in our local market. In the meantime, take care and we'll see you soon.